blessings greet him to Capsom TV. You can find us on YouTube channel at KAPC-SOM TV. I am Dr. Anthony Clark, and we want to praise God for another day, another privilege, and opportunity to share with you the living word of God. Thank you for turning on, tuning in, and turning up to the kingdom frequency where we always have a fresh revelation, fresh spiritual food for your spirit, soul, and body directly from the courtroom and from the throne room of heaven. Now, uh, today, we're going to talk about, and uh, throughout the next couple of uh, weeks or uh, series, we're going to be talking about the power of the kingdom blessing, the power of the kingdom blessing, amen, and the word authority comes from the Hebrew word mishtar, and the word uh, power that we're going to be used comes from the Hebrew word tokep, and so the word blessing comes from the Hebrew word berakah, and our foundation scripture uh, we're going to, I guess I'm going to use the, uh, the New King James Version today. And we want to uh, start with Proverbs 10 and 22. Proverbs 10 and 22. And you may read a little different from you uh, if you're using a uh, different translation, but if you follow along with us, I'm sure we'll end up at the same place. Now, uh, for our foundation, it says the blessing or the better car of the Lord. And the, when we're talking about the Lord, we're talking about Yahweh, the Father. We're talking about Yeshua, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. And that word sorrow means toil or struggles or troubles. God doesn't add that with the blessing. And if you are watching us today, uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe for, as we get into this message today. This blesses us so we can continue to be a blessing to you. Now, so. That word sorrow means struggle, trouble, and you're going to have trials, you're going to have tests, you're going to have struggles, but in having those, the power of the blessing, of the kingdom blessing, always prevails over everything. Now, uh, the thought that every born-again believer can operate in the power of the kingdom blessing just like Jesus or the early apostles did, it, it may amaze a lot of believers today. The, uh, the struggle to picture themselves multiplying natural resources like loaves of bread and fish, healing the sick, raising the dead. Yet in the Bible, uh, Jesus declared that anybody, black, white, red, yellow, male, female, doesn't make any difference. Anybody... Uh, 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 with faith, with a faith of God in him, in Christ, could uh, do all things, all these things, and more. In other words, they can apply the blessing, they can apply faith, and, and, and manifest and demonstrate the better car or the blessing of, through the power of the kingdom blessing. Now, uh, if you'll be so kind and go with me to... Um, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures that talks about the blessing. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. We're just going to read them, and then we're going to get on into our lesson. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. And it says, blessed or be the God and Father, talking about Yahweh, or we call him Abba, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has. When you see that word has in Scripture, it means has already. It means it's already, he's already blessed us. It's not, he's not going to bless us. Like I was talking to one of my daughters this morning. He was saying, uh, uh, waiting for something to do. And she says, uh, and I told her, God is not going to do it. He's already done it. 
We are already healed. We are already delivered. We are already blessed. Blessed from the Hebrew word berakah means empowered to get supernatural results. So what are we talking about? The power of kingdom blessing in our everyday life and using it with our word. You can release the power of the kingdom blessing knowing having supernatural or revelation knowledge that the blessing is already yours. It's not going to be yours. It's already yours. It's for you, it's for your children, it's for your husband, your wife, your fiance, your fiance, your brothers, your sisters, and your loved ones. The blessing, the power of the blessing is already yours. All right, now let's go on. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has already blessed us or empowered us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. That means that every spiritual blessing that's in the kingdom of God is already yours. Look at your neighbor saying that they're already mine. Say, right now they're mine. Say, every blessing in the kingdom are already mine. Yeah, so we need to we need to catch hold of that. It's better caught than taught. And the fourth verse says, just like he has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame in his presence in love. Now go with me to first Peter one and four, if you would. We're gonna move on. First Peter one and four. First Peter one and four, and then we're gonna stay right there, and we're gonna go to Second Peter as well, one and three. First Peter one and four, and it reads like this. Again, I'm teaching from the New King James Version today. It said, "Bless," and that word "bless" is again, "Blessed be the God and Father." Talking about Yahweh, talking about our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, based upon His abundant mercy, say this to yourself: God has abundant, overflowing mercy and compassion for me and mine. Yes, all the time. And so it says, abundant mercy has begotten or he has recreated us or we are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, it says, now this is what he has blessed us with and this is what he has raised us to. And a lot of people don't teach that. We have been raised to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away reserved in heavens or preserved in the kingdom for us wow and then it goes on to say we are kept by the power of god that's the power of the kingdom blessing we are kept by the power of god through faith now that's god's faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time now flip over to second peter one and three Talking about the power of the kingdom blessing. We're going to get on down into it in a minute. I want to give you a little foundation. And it says, uh, according or as his divine, divine means supernatural or godly power. Now watch it. That's, that's what? That's the power of the kingdom blessing. Watch it. According or as his divine or supernatural power has uh, already given to us all things. Say all things. See, what comes after all? Nothing. What comes after nothing? Nothing. Wow. Now watch this. God, I've given you three scriptures already. According as this divine or supernatural power has already given to us all things that pertain or that we need to life and living like Christ through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue. Now what does that mean? That means that God is everything that we're ever going to need it's already ours. I, I showed you that in Ephesians 1 and 3. I showed you that in Proverbs 10 and 22. I showed you that in 1 Peter 1 and 4. And incidentally, in 1 Peter 1 and uh, 4, they are preserved, reserved, set aside, and laid aside in the bank vault, the treasure house, or the storehouse of God just for you. And see, religion doesn't teach that because they don't want you to know that you are already free. And the Bible says he who the son set free is what? Free indeed. 
and one uh, one man of God a long time ago, he said, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. We are what? Free at last. That means everybody, black, brown, red, yellow, white, male or female, we are free to be kingdom people uh, partaking of the power of the kingdom blessing right here and right now. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what kind of thought the enemy to put it or inject in your mind. You already know based upon what God says. And God says in, in Numbers 23 and 19, he said, I'm not a man that I, that I should tell a lie. I'm paraphrasing. Or, Nor am I the son of man or that I should change, repent or change my mind. And he said, if I said it, won't I do it? And God always make every word that comes out of his mouth good in our life. But we have to believe that. We have to expect that. We have to use the faith of God that's on the inside of us to appropriate the, the power of the kingdom blessing so they can manifest in our lives. Say amen to that. And one more. Flip over to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, and we, we, we're going to move on. Galatians. 3, 13, and 14. Man, I was uh, up early this morning getting this getting this download. I was excited. I'm still excited. And Galatians 3, 13, and 14 says this. Christ, or the, or the anointed one and his anointing, in Hebrew his name is Mashiach. And it means the anointed one and his anointing. He has redeemed. Redeemed means bought back. Say, so I was bought back by the blood of Jesus. We settled everything, every problem, every circumstance, every issue, every trouble, every heartache, every headache, every pain, everything that makes us out of order, puts us back in order, back into the kingdom under the power of the kingdom blessing. If that's good stuff, say amen to that. All right, now watch that. He said he has redeemed us and delivered us and bought us back with his blood from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us because it is written in Scripture, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Now, if Jesus became a curse for us, why in the world on God's earth are we allowing the, the devil to bring the curses into our lives, spiritually or mentally or physically or financially or in what? Relationship. Why are we allowing that when we have more authority than he does? We have legal authority as sons and daughters of the kingdom because we have available all heaven and we have a we have a, a angelic escort to make sure that we are all right. Say amen to that. And number 14 says that the blessing, that that word is again, that the blessing all blessing, the blessing of the Lord maketh you rich not poor. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich not broke. The blessing of the Lord don't make, don't give you a low self-esteem. The blessing of the Lord should. Jesus said, all that's going to live like me or be like me, you're going to go through temptation. You're going to go through trial. You're going to go through trial. He said, but be, be, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. Talking about the world system. There are two systems. We're in this world. But say that, say that with me. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Say the world doesn't dictate to me. What's mine? Woo! Suck it, suck it now. I like that. Now watch it. That the blessing of Abraham might come up on the Gentiles, the, those are non-Jews, or, or, or those who are out of the covenant, in Christ Jesus, that we, when that word we means Jews and Gentiles, that means all people, all ethnicities, doesn't make any difference, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. What is the promise? The blessing, the kingdom is our inheritance. And there's so much of it that we haven't been taught about because when we are born, we are programmed right into the negativity. But we're getting rid of it. Now, let's go on. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So now watch this. So in, uh, in John uh, 14 and 2, flip over there for me. I'm going to be using a, a lot of scriptures. John 14 and 12. John 14 and 12. I'm glad I got the... The Lord let me use the King James, the new King James today. I didn't get a chance to, I forgot to get my, uh, to tell you the truth, I forgot to get my clear word and my passion translation out of my bag. <laughs> That's all right. He said, most assuredly, I'll tell you the truth. 
I say to you, whoever believes in me, the works or the actions that I do, they will do also, and greater works than these will they do because I go to my Father. Now look at the 13th verse. And it says, and whatever you ask or whatever you petition or uh, demand in my name, I will do it. Like if you demand the devil to take his hand off of your body, if you demand the devil to take his hand off of your finances, whatever you demand the devil to do in the name of Jesus, you're not demanding of God, you're demanding of the devil. Jesus says, I'm watching over that demand, and I'm going to make sure that it comes to pass. Say amen to that. Isn't that good stuff? And, and so uh, he said, if you ask, and then the 14th verse, he said, it, that the 13th, that I would do, that the Father may be glorified. In other words, every time we use the name of Jesus, every time we petition the Father in the name of Jesus for something, then and we put a demand, so in other words, we are praying to the Father, but we are demanding in the name of Jesus, uh, everything is going to be all right. He said in one passage of Scripture, he said, all things work together for your good who love me to those of you who are called according to my purpose. Everybody in, on the planet has, have a calling, but everybody don't leave here without answering that calling. Oh, y'all don't play. All right, let's go on a little bit further. So Matthew, flip over to Matthew. We're going to get on. Is this good stuff? Right from Scripture. Matthew 17 and 20. Got to move on. And it reads as such. So Jesus said to them, because of your, um, uh, well, what had happened, uh, 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 they tried to cast <laughs> they couldn't cast out a demon and uh, in the 17th verse and Jesus answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation you know we in a perverse generation right now uh, and how long will I be with you how long I'm going to put up with you how long shall I bear with you bring him to me it was a young man who uh, the father had went to Jesus and said have mercy on my son for he is an epileptic and suffered severely he suffered seizures for he often falls into the fire and often into the water and the disciples uh, had understood that he spoke to the uh, uh, when the man came to them he spoke to them of John the, the baptizer and when they had come to the multitude, a man came to Jesus kneeling down and said, Master, Master, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. And Jesus, how long am I going to deal with you? And then Jesus rebuked the demon. Watch this. You can rebuke a demon. Say amen to that. It doesn't make any difference who it shows up in or shows up after. You can rebuke that demon. You can correct that demon. You can arrest that demon. You can cast that demon what? Out. You can drive him out by the what? By the power of the kingdom blessing. Say amen to that. Is that good stuff? All right. Now, let's go on down to the uh, uh, 19th verse. He said, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why, why, Master, how come we couldn't cast that demon out? And notice what he said. Because of your unbelief, because of your doubt, because of your lack of faith. Wow. These are his disciples, and they were with him 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three and a half years, and the, um, they weren't even saved. But the anointing or the mantle that was upon his life was transferred to them. Oh, if you're under an apostle in here or out there, if you're under an apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor or teacher, whatever anointing, whatever mantle, whatever blessing or uh, power of the kingdom blessing is on his or her life, it flows right from them to you. Wow. Say amen to that. Say, I'm blessed. He said, my blessed is blessed. That's what I'm talking about. All right. And he said, so Jesus said, because of this, he said, but I'm telling you the truth. He said, if you have faith as small as a little mustard seed, you can't hardly hold a mustard seed as small as it is in your hand. He said, and you will say to this mountain, he will point to a mountain, mountain of doubt, mountain of unbelief, mountain of sickness, mountain of disease, all mountains, all adversity, all opposition, all, oh, y'all not going to play with me today, all obstacles. He said, he said, move from the, in other words, you can tell a situation that is coming to your life. 
get up out of my life because you have the power of the kingdom blessing to uproot that with your mouth. Why? Why you always say that, Dr. Clark? Because we're apostolic, prophetically living, speaking spirits. Wow. We're prophetically speaking spirit. We're living prophetically speaking spirit. We're living spiritual soul with the mind of Christ and with his ability, amen, to speak the words of God and get the same supernatural godly results every time. But we got to be taught that from the what? Inside out. Wow. Isn't that good? My, my, my. And then he goes on. He said, if you have faith, he said, if it move from here and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. But we've been taught by religion that it's impossible. God said twice and even right here, all things are possible if you believe. Well, how many in here are believers? How many out there are believers? We're all believers. Um, if you're a believer, then there's nothing impossible to you. Why? Because of the power of the kingdom blessing that's resident down on. I'm excited. Y'all had to y'all had to put up with the doc just for a few minutes i'm excited about this because i get a chance to minister this amen look with me to mark 11 16 mark 16 i apologize 17 and 18 mark 16 17 and 18 now watch this in the 15th verse, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news. I don't give a care who you are, how long you've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, tongue-talking, Bible-toting, faith-walking, peace-loving, victory-confessing, blood-bought, man or woman of God. If you're not preaching and teaching the good news of the kingdom, you are out of order. Say amen to that. He said, now go in and preach the good news to every creature. That means to everybody. Amen. And he goes on to say, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved or delivered. Amen. Or healed or made whole. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing out of order. Nothing out of place. Nothing out of position. Nothing out of kingdom alignment. Nothing out of kingdom jurisdiction. Are y'all listening to me today? Say amen. And he goes on and says, he said, well, whoever does not believe will be condemned. Why? Because they'll be condemned with the devil because the devil has people not believing. And the truth has already been released. The truth has already been told. All we got to do is appropriate that truth, receive that truth, act on that truth. Oh, man, in our everyday life. And then the 17th verse said, and these signs, signs in Hebrew means miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. They're a miracle sign of wonder to you. But what we learn, what we learn, and the apostles learn, and what Jesus was teaching them are how to use the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you lock up is going to be locked up in heaven. Whatever you unlock on earth is already locked up in heaven. Let me say that again. Whatever you lock up on earth is already locked up in heaven. And whatever you unlock on earth is already unlocked in heaven. You got to learn how to use the keys. Learn the secret of using the what? The keys of the kingdom, which are the scripture through your Bible, which is your kingdom constitution. You have rights. You have privileges. You have opportunity. You have benefits. You have blessings. You have provision. Use them say amen to that is that good stuff let's go on he said he said they were in my name or in my character in my authority in my nature in my very person in my very being he said they won't cast out demons they will speak with new tongues i mean you will i was talking to one of my students just this week and she said i've been waiting to get filled with the holy spirit i said be filled right now receive it right now and i couldn't feel her but i said well, if you ready she said well i'm ready i said and i begin to pray with her and the girl i had to put the phone down the girl started speaking in tongues over the phone. Say amen to that. Just like that. Look at your neighbor and say, just like that. Just like that. Woo! I'm excited. Is it warm in here or is it just me? <laughs> Let's go on. We got to move. We got to ease on down the road. Now watch this. They will take up serpents, and if they drink, now taking up serpents means dealing with the devil, dealing with supernatural evil power. Now watch this. He said they will deal with the enemy, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will, watch this, they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Not maybe, they will recover. 
Let's go on. And in 19 and 20, so then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven. Now, he was prophetically speaking to them because it had not happened in their lives yet or our lives yet. So he was proper. He was speaking the, the living word of God. And when you speak that word of God, it will come to pass because we are sent here to demonstrate that to the people in the world. Say amen. All right. Now, what they say, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. The right hand of God is the right hand of the of the power of the universe of the Father. He it is no higher seat of the in the universe of the kingdom of heaven is where he's seated at right next to the Father. And guess what? You and I are seated right there with him. So why are you tripping? Wow. Why are you tripping when the devil come at you? Why are you tripping when the devil? I had to learn that, been there, done that, not going back. What? This is better. All right. Uh, and so they, the apostles and the believers and the disciples and all of them, they went out and they preached, I can say, and teached everywhere. The Lord was working with them, and he was confirming his word through miracles, signs, and wonders. That's why we got to learn the power of the kingdom blessing. Now, let's, let's go on down. Let's ease on down where we were. Okay. Now, if you believe what I just, what we just went through to be true, then you may wonder why has the body of Christ at large as a whole not uh, embraced all of it? Why have they not appropriated them? Why have they not taken these things into their life? Why are the millions of believers who show up for services every Sunday or even through the week, why aren't they rocking the cities for Jesus by preaching or teaching the good news of the kingdom and being demonstrated by signs and wonders, following all week long. Why are they not doing that? I believe that one primary reason for that is most believers don't know who they are. I know everybody listening to me here in Capstone, they know who they are. They learn how that they're a little uh, I am of the big I am. They learn how to walk in there or live in their I amness. Say amen to that. All right, and so they've been, uh, they say they've been brainwashed by the devil into believing his lie that they're just old sinner saved by grace. You don't find that in no way in the Bible where it says I'm an old sinner saved by grace. Wow. They've been convinced by religion or customs and tradition that they are nothing more than fallen human beings, your worthless, and have been forgiven by a living God. As a result, they spend most of their entire life identifying more with being, being the, 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 uh, defeated Adam than with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the second Adam. He did what, I, uh, what the first Adam didn't do. Say amen. And he won it with his blood. Now, flip with me right quick to uh, Psalms 8 and 5. Psalms 8 and 5. I'm moving right along. Psalms 8 and 5. And then we're going to go to Psalms 82, 6 and 7. I got my finger there. Psalms 8 and 5. Psalms 8 and 5. Are y'all getting anything out of this this morning? Yes, Lord. Amen. Psalms 8 and 5. I trust that you are. All right, and it reads as such. Let's look at the, uh, let's start with the third verse. When I consider the heavens or the, everything that we see, the stars, the, m the moon, the sun, and all the stuff that he put up there in the, up above us, the moon and the stars which you have appointed or ordained, what is man that you are so thoughtful of him or so concerned about man and, the, and the, his offspring that you visit him and he's always concerned. He takes a personal concern about every area of our life. He said, for you have made him man, mankind, a little lower than yourself and you have crowned him with glory and honor and you have made him to have dominion, say dominion, yeah, dominion over all the works of your hand, and you'll put all things under his feet. Now, that means everything. There's nothing that God didn't put under our feet. Adam gave it up. Jesus came and took it back. So that means every sickness, every problem, every circumstance, every situation, every financial issue, every spiritual issue, every mental issue uh, where that's causing people that the spirit of death going out through the land, that's causing people to take their own life, commit suicide. Uh, you have authority over that. You don't have to listen to that spirit. Why? As a believer, because you have the power of the kingdom blessing on your side. 
like one of my ministers always said, favor, favor, favor. Now watch this. All the sheep, all the cattle, all the ox, all the beasts of the field, all the birds of the air, all the fish of the sea that pass through the path of the sea. Oh, and, and he's given us authority over all of that. Now look at Psalms 82, 6 and 7, and we're going to keep on we're going to keep on moving. Psalms 82, 6 and 7. And it reads this thus. It said, I said, you are gods. Little Elohim. Now, that's written in scripture. Now, we can never be God, but we can be little G-O-D-S. Say amen to that. He said, and all of you, all of you are children of the Most High. Most High means El Elyon. And you shall die like men, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes of the earth if you don't change your way. So we have to change our way. We can't, we can't operate like the, like the enemy operate. We can't operate uh, uh, without the power of the kingdom blessing functioning in our life. So what are you saying, Dr. Clark? Uh, as a, uh, uh, I was talking about people uh, saying they're old sinners saved by grace, uh, been given and saved by grace. No, you're not that. You're either a sinner or, or you've been saved by grace. But you can't be both at the same time. Why are you going to halt between two opinions? Wow, did I say that? So if you truly are a sinner, then receive Jesus. Get yourself saved as, as your Lord and get saved. If you're already saved, then stop thinking of yourself as the same person you were before you came to Christ, before you came into the kingdom under the kingdom blessing. Get, get that phrase, I'm just an old sinner, out of your mind and out of your mouth because spiritual law declared that we have what we say. Whoa. You find that in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the authority of the tongue or in the power of your word. You are responsible for what happens in your life because God took the responsibility off of him, gave you all the blessings, all the empowerment, all the tools, everything that you're ever going to need to be just like Christ, to be just like him so we have no excuse. Whoa, did I say that? And Mark 11, 23 said, what, what, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you have already received them and you will have them. And he said, if you speak to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your mind, but believe in your heart or believe in your spirit that what you say will come to pass. You will have whatever you say. Say, so I will. Say, so I do have whatever I say. Man. If that don't light your fire, your wood is wet. Now, let's go on. Let's go on a little bit further. So, now, if you keep calling yourself a sinner, uh, the devil will see to it that, that whatever you say is going to come to pass. Oh, here, have you acting like a sinner before, before, before the sun set? And unless you change what you say, he'll keep you acting that way for the rest of your life. You got I, I teach here what you call a, a crop failure. If you put something in the ground or sow something in the ground of your spirit, amen, then, and, you, and you know it's the wrong thing and the Holy Spirit convicts you whatever, the wrong seed, wrong word, then you got to uproot that. You got to do a crop failure. So how do you do that? You go back and you put the right seed and the right seed will uproot, will move the wrong seed out of the way. Well, in the natural, what you do, you better. You pl plant a wrong seed in the ground, you got to go back and do what? Dig it up and plant the what? The right seed so you can have whatever you say. Watch this. So a lot of times, don't misunderstand me. Uh, I'm not saying just because we are saved, but we're going to live a sinless perfection. No, I haven't even arrived yet as long as I've been doing it. And I still make some mistakes. I don't get to make a whole lot, but I still make some mistakes. I'm still living in this body. I still have to live, deal with these five natural sins. Are y'all listening to me? Oh, and, and so uh, you, we're going to miss it and sin from time to time. But as we live or walk out the process, say walk it out. Say work it out. Say live it out. All right. And so as we walk or work or live out the process of renewing our mind to what the word of God said, then uh, occasionally uh, we'll behave in a way we'll, we'll, we'll behave out of character and, and which is not consistent with who we really are. You got to start acting like who what? You really are. Say I'm a kingdom believer. Say I'm a winner, not a doubter. 
Say, I'm a winner, not a loser. Say, I believe by the faith of God. What I say will come to pass. Every day, all day, all the time, no matter how long it takes to manifest, it will happen because God said so. Ooh, and if he said so, you can take that, baby. You can take that to the bank. Say amen to that. Now, but that doesn't change the, the truth that as a born again um, a man or woman of God, you are not by nature an old sinner. Or on the contrary, the New Testament says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, and, and before we go there, I want to I wanna emphasize Romans 12 and 2, and it talks about be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't pattern your way of thinking. Don't pattern your way of believing. Don't pattern your way of speaking. Don't pattern your way of acting. Don't pattern your way of expectation. Don't pattern your way of bringing things into manifestation because you can speak death and poverty and broke over your life and you're going to be broke and you're going to be Oh, y'all not listening to me. Let's go on. And he said, but be transformed, but focus on the living word of God and be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you, not God, you may prove what is that good. You may prove what is that acceptable and perfect will of God. Say amen to that. Amen. All right, let's go on a little bit further. Now, so that doesn't change that, uh, the, that fact. So the phrase in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, 17 says this, if any man, I'm talking about male or female, because there's, in, there's no gender in the spirit. And so God took, when he created us, he played, took a spirit man, put it in a male body, and then he turned around and put that same spirit man who was Christ in a female body. So Christ was in Adam and Christ was in Eve. Oh, y'all don't, don't, don't get that. And it says, if any one of them be in Christ, the, the he or she is a new creature all things are passed away, and all things are come new. The phrase new creature means new species. You're in God's class of being. So I am in God's class of being now. Right, yeah, so I like that. It doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't refer to somebody or something old that has been refurbished. It doesn't uh, describe a forgiven sinner who has been cleaned up a little. A new species or a new creature is freshly created, a freshly created species of being that has never existed before, and that's what you are in here, and that's what you are out there. Say, I am. Yes. So the old sinner that you once were has passed away. And the old negative person that you were passed away. Or the old doubtful person passed away. That all, everything that Dr. Clark was before I came to Christ, I'm no longer that person from the what? Inside out. Amen. Oh, right. I want you to catch this. We're talking about we're talking about the power of the kingdom. Bless. It makes us us rich. And watch that. And if you are listening to me today and you're struggling and, and getting your blessing, I suggest you examine yourself to see if you are walking and living and working in now love by now faith because God is now love and God is now faith and God does not lie. If he said, I've already blessed you, then what are you waiting on? Don't postpone the blessing. Get up under the power of the kingdom blessing. Start opening up your mouth and start prophesying, not prophesying. Did I say that? Let me, let me, amen. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go. I had to smile at that one. Amen. Let's go on a little bit further. And so watch it. So that old person died. That old person died at the death of the cross with Jesus. So when Jesus went to the cross or the tree, you did that because he identified with us and in our humanity all the way to that point. Why? So when he hung on that tree, we hung on that tree. When he died on that tree, we died on that tree. When he went down to hell, we went down in hell. Oh, Oh, when he rose up from the dead, well, we rose up from the dead. Say amen to that. We rose up above all, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Bless coming in and bless going out. Bless in the city. Bless when you drive your car. Bless when you're at work. Bless when you're with your children. Bless when you go to the grocery store. Shana ya basai. Glory to God. I'm excited about this today. I'm blessed. I don't know about you, but I can say it by myself. I'm blessed. Say amen to that. Amen. All right. And so now watch this. And so uh, with Jesus, when, watch this. When 
Jesus defeated the devil and took the authority that he had over all mankind. Why? And he, what did he do there? He turned around and he gave that authority back to us. Say amen to that. We're a kingdom believers. We're a kingdom people. And we're living under the power of the kingdom blessing. And it's time for us to step up and step out and stand up and let our shokotere abasa, let our prophetic voice be heard every now, every day, not every now and then, but every day, all day, all of the time. Just for not only for others to hear you, but for you to hear yourself. Say amen. Is that good? I'm excited. Hallelujah. Now, in, in the 21st verse, before we get there, they say, in, a, in that very instant, you and I and all ours that we lead to Christ were born again. We were recreated. We became brand new people in Christ. In the 21st verse of that same chapter said, for God has made him, Christ, the Father has made Christ Jesus to be seen in his human spirit for us. That means you and I, your children, your grandchildren, your husband, your wife, your brothers, your sisters, everybody, amen. Uh, he said, who knew no sin, be, that you may become the righteousness of God the Father in Christ. What does that mean? What does that mean? The right. It means he is deposited and imparted into you in an instant. Say in an instant. Say as they say today, say just like that. Just like that, he took you out of the out of the authority and the power of the kingdom of darkness and moved you into the authority and the power of the kingdom of his blessing. Wow. Say amen. Is that all right? Notice, notice that that verse didn't doesn't say that God has accounted righteousness to us. He is just uh, he hasn't just given us credit for righteousness. We we really don't possess. We don't really possess. That's an old covenant concept. That's what he did for the people like Abraham before Jesus came to finish the work of delivering all human beings. He counted what's it? He counted their sin debt paid on the basis of what Jesus would one day do for them. That's what God, God declared the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Y'all better say amen that I'm, I'm, I'm lit up up here today. Say amen. Why? He treated them as righteous in spite of their, own, their spiritual condition. Isn't that what God does for us? Wow. Wow. Certainly he has canceled our debt. Certainly he has canceled our defeat, our failure, our lack, our poverty. He has canceled all of that as he did there. He, rec he has recorded in the land book of life, amen, that we were crucified on Calvary with Christ. It showed that we died, went to hell. I just told you that. We suffered the poor penalty of our sin. Why are you suffering any of that now? It's no, oh, y'all not listening to me. It's no excuse. Watch it. Heaven has it recorded that we were raised from the dead in righteousness. Righteousness is the life and the love nature of God. I mean, you can stand in the presence of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God's holy angel, Satan and his unholy angel and his demonic force without any sense of guilt, condemnation, or inferiority. Why? Because the Bible said that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit, who live from the inside out and not from the outside. And that's exactly what that means. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus in me, has set me free from the law of sin and death, which was in the devil. Say amen. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm all right. My, my fire is lit now. Let's go on. So heaven has that recorded. Now watch this. And he's not only he seated us at the throne of grace at the Father's right hand. On earth we have it recorded that Jesus did all those things, but heaven has recorded in your name. In other words, everything that Jesus did, your name is right there. Jesus didn't need to do that for himself. He did have to say he did it for me. Say again, he did it for me. Yeah, that's right. Now watch this. So uh, heaven has it recorded in your name. Uh, I heard a gospel group one saying, he said, put your name on it. And said, because he was our substitute. Everything he did was for us. Say everything that Jesus did was for me. Say me and mine right now. Uh -huh. Say so I received that. Now watch that. Now. Uh, as believers, uh, watch this. Uh, 
However, we have more than just a legal record of righteousness. We have actually been made the righteousness of the Father that's in Christ Jesus as spotless and without sin as Jesus himself. Wow. Well, a, a moment ago I said that all deaths are canceled, our sin death. Well, wow. in Deuteronomy 15 and 2, you can look it up on your own in the message translation. It says all deaths are canceled. God said so. Say Amen. All right. He says, all deaths are canceled. God said so. Now watch this. To do that, he had to make us brand new from the inside out. He couldn't take our old sin nature and make it righteous any more than we could take a beaten up old Volkswagen uh, to the repair shop and get, and get back a Cadillac. There's no way you, uh, that's impossible. You can't, <laughs> a Cadillac has to be, <laughs> a Cadillac has to be manufactured. Say amen. It's made to be a what? Cadillac. Or oh, as they say here, it, it, uh, it had a lack. We, they call it a lack. They, they put the cad off. Now, the same thing is true with us spiritually, sons and daughters of God. Truly righteous men and women, we must be created or manufactured that way. Say, so we are manufactured that way, just like that. And so when the devil coming to you, you got to tell him, I'm already, uh, I'm already above anything you can bring to me just like that. Just like that. Amen. Wow. And so when we're born again, our old, fouled up, sinful spirits are, are by the power of the Almighty God manufactured in the, and, and, uh, now watch this, I'm going to give you something. We're manufactured or we're made into a spiritual equivalent of a Rolls Royce. Wow. So we we are we are recreated and we have all oh, y'all oh, are we not royalty? Yes, Say so is God stingy? Is God broke? No. Oh well then if you think God is not gonna create us with his best and we can compare it if you compare it to car like the equivalent to a spirit to equivalent to a Rolls Royce, the the car of king. Oh, did I say car of king? Oh, all right, all right. All right, we're winding on down. Now, if we, watch this. Now, if we're such spiritual giants, then why do, we, why do we still deal with so many of the same struggles we had before we were born again? Good question. Because the part of us that was recreated is our spirit, or what the kingdom constitution or the Bible calls the hidden man or the inner man or the inner spirit. Your spirit is the real you. In the Bible, it's often referred to as the heart because it is the center of who you are. It's the life and power center of every human being that's ever been born on this planet. Although your spirit has been born again in the image and the likeness of God, you have been restored back to the kingdom. The kingdom has been restored back to you. Why? As your inheritance, everything that you were, your original self, God has restored you. Now, people may look at you from the outside and they may not see that. And because you, uh, it takes a process for your mind, for your thinking to be changed from, as my minister said, stinking thinking to kingdom thinking. It takes a little while, amen, but once you get, once you catch that from the inside, side out then you're going to people going to start thinking and say oh that person that man that woman of god they're acting or those that group of people they're acting like royalty you ought to supposed to act like royalty from the what inside out amen let's go on and so uh, uh as we go on uh, the image and likeness of god is absolutely perfect so, so i'm created to live the good life by the perfect righteousness by the perfect spirit by the perfect image of God on the inside of me right now. All right, wow. Well, ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, but we got a perfect, we got a perfect Savior on the inside of you. You got a perfect Heavenly Father on the inside of you. You have the perfect Lord Jesus on the inside of you. You have a perfect Ruach HaKodesh or perfect Holy Spirit on the inside of you, which makes you complete. In other words, God says, I, I, you have the Father in you, you have the Son in you, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. And, the, and God told me every day this week, he said, son, if you know that I'm living inside of you and the Father is with you and the whole, in the person of the Holy Spirit, why, why are people tripping? Why are people worrying? Why are people full of anxiety and doubt and unbelief? He said, I'm right there. I'm going to take care of everything. I take a personal interest in every area of your life. Say amen. Say amen again. 
Wave your hand in the air, y'all, and act like you just don't care. Woo! Amen. All right. Now, so we are a three-part being. Watch this. We are spirit. We have a soul. We are not a soul. We are a spirit. We have a soul. Amen. And we live inside of a physical body. And it talks about that in First uh, uh, Thessalonians 5 and, and 23 when it talks about uh, by the Apostle Paul and the very Father or Yahweh or with a peace set apart you holy and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved um, blameless or innocent until the coming of the Lord. I mean our whole spirit, our whole soul and our whole body. Well the body said the Bible said our body present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your spiritual act of worship when you when you know that your body right now is the temple of the Holy Spirit you're going to honor God and you're not going to go anywhere you're not going to say anything and you're not going to do anything oh say amen to that that you don't want God to be a part of because he's a part of everything you say a part of everything you do and he's with you everywhere you go oh oh yeah 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 Notice that the spirit is listed first. Watch this. Then the soul and the body lad comes last. There's a reason for this. The power of you or who you are works from the inside out. Yes, you catching that? Amen. Watch this. Then as your mind is renewed to what is taking place on the inside of you, your soul is changed. And, and you are transformed and you increasingly take hold of your true identity in Christ. Say, my identity in Christ is Christ. The hope of glory. Woo-wee. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm, about, I'm almost done. And as we do this, our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our out circumstances reflect who we really is. Reflect, as I teach a lot here, it reflects your I amness. Wow. Apostle, all the apostles, even after Jesus, learned how to walk in their I am, how to live from the what? Inside out. Who they really are. They live like royalty, even though all hell was, was coming at them on the outside. But they couldn't touch them because they were, they were from a world or from a kingdom that could not be shaken. Said so we are from a kingdom that's on the inside of us that cannot be shaken no matter what. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Second Corinthians uh, 3 and 18 said this. It says that we continue to see ourselves in the word of God as in a mirror, which is the glory of God. We're constantly being changed. We're constantly being transformed into the very image of Christ over and over from one level to another level, from one, from one dimension to another dimension until the Father gets us completely transformed from the inside out. When people see us, they won't see us from the outside. They'll see us from the inside. They'll see us, all oh, those people are there. They're talking like Christ. They're acting like Christ. They're dominating like Christ. You're supposed to be dominating, not being dominated in this life. Say amen. We're almost done. We're almost done. Now watch this. So, uh, Believers who don't see in the mirror of the word of God, you can find that in James 1, 23 through 25, uh, or who, who they are in Christ. They, they don't see it. They can't live in the, uh, they can live in defeat for years, feeling as much as a loser and that they were before they got saved. I know because I did it. Wow. I had no idea that I had become a new creature when I was born again. Although I loved Jesus with all my heart, I experienced very little victory or winning very much, a little much because I was dragging my past with me everywhere I went. I know nobody in here, nobody out there dragging their past everywhere they go. Wow. Thank you. Oh, let's go on a little bit further. So, of course, it's, uh, this is good news that I'm ministering to today for, for people just like me. It's important information for every believer that we need to know. All who want to operate in the fullness of the blessing must understand what really happened to us when we got saved. Wasn't just, it's not, wasn't refurbished. I'm going over that again. And so watch this. You must understand what really happened. We need to realize that the God Father himself, the Lord Jesus himself, and the Holy Spirit hovered over you. Amen. Watch this. Hovered over you, planted the word of God as a seed within you, and you were 
spiritually reborn from the inside out. What happened in us spiritually is much the same that happened in the Virgin Mary physically. When she conceived the living word, Jesus, just as the word, just as the word became the supernatural seed in her body and brought forth Jesus in the word, the word of God implanted in your spirit, amen, uh, brings forth Jesus on the inside of us. Wow. That's why we, we're striving to be just like Christ every single day. Amen. We're born again in his likeness. Not of a seed that's corruptible, but a seed that's incorruptible. It can't be, it can't be tainted. The word of God which lives and abides forever. Now watch this. One of the best pictures of what happens to us at the new birth is found in Genesis of the account of, of the creation of Adam. We're winding on down. Uh, when God breathed into him the breath of life by saying, man, be in my image after my likeness. Have dominion over all the earth and everything in it. And when the word went into Adam, he lit up the, with the very life of God himself. When you got born again, Amen. The Holy Spirit lit you up with the very life of God himself. Man, ooh, I, 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 I got to quit because I'm almost out of time. I'm going to quit in a few minutes. I still got a few minutes left. I, if I keep on, I won't, I won't be able to, but I got a reminder back there to always remind me. I'm just having fun. Now, watch this. So, he was, Jesus was love. Adam was love just like God is love. He was light just like God is light. Adam, like God, was a fire from the loins up and fire from the loins down. Let me tell you something. You right now as a kingdom believer with the power of the kingdom blessing on the inside of your life, you're fire from the waist up and you're fire from the waist down. Wow. You find that in Ezekiel 1, 26 to 27. The very lightning of the Father's glory radiated out of Adam. That's why people, they can tell whether you're a believer or not because your countenance is full of light. When they look at you, they see light in oh, you. I'm not going to. Uh, if you looked at God and Adam standing together, you wouldn't be able to tell one from the other because they were both covered in the same fire. You are covered in that same fire right now. It's thrilling just to think about it. But, but what's even more, sons and daughters of God, is, is, is the same thing happened to us when we were born again. The very spirit of the Almighty God breathed new life into us. He lit up our inner man with himself the same way that he lit Adam up. That's why I'm lit up right Right here now. Amen. In the same and again, he activated in our beings the very same word he spoke at the beginning in the garden. Man, or whatever your name is, be in my image and have dominion. Now, if you can look inside yourself at your spirit right now, you'd be absolutely messed up. Your mind be blown because you see the, all the attributes, all the characteristics, everything that God is, is resident on the inside of you. Actually, you realize that just as you were born naturally with a physical DNA from your natural parent, you have been born again right now with the spiritual DNA of God. Say, I have the spiritual DNA of Almighty God in Christ Jesus in me right now. Mm -mm -mm. And, the, and now those, those attitudes are, may not be fully developed yet uh, at birth, uh, uh, like a, like, uh, like much like a baby, but they're all there. Wow. They're, amen. They're, they are not fully developed uh, and mature. Again, I'm going to say that again, but they're all there. Much like a baby, when a baby is born, a baby has all the physical parts, all the bones, all the organs and the parents ha that the parents have. But on a smaller scale, you already have within you everything you need to grow up become or, or, and become on the inside and outside just like this. I have everything on the inside of me right now. Say, I just need to grow up. Woo! Did I say that? Yeah. Your, your inner man is love just like the Father is love. Your spirit is on fire, amen, with the very light of God's presence, glory. You are light just like God is light. Now, in Jeremiah 29, it said, uh, he said, <laughs> uh, Jeremiah said, well, let's turn that right quick. We're almost out of time. Jeremiah 20 and 9, and I'm going to read that to you as we ran out of time, and we're going to close. And I'll finish this all up this week as I prepare uh, for our broadcast 20 and 9. We are running out of time. Let's see. 20 and 9. 
there it is. He said, then I said, this is Jeremiah said, that I, then I said I would not make mention of God anymore, or Yahweh anymore, nor speak anymore in his name. But his word, watch it, his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bone, and I was weary of trying to, I got tired of trying to hold it back, and I couldn't hold it back. When the fire of God is resident down on the inside of you, and you understand about the kingdom power, the power of the kingdom blessing on the inside of you, you're not going to hold back from telling somebody about who you are and who Christ is. From the what? From the inside out. Wow, because you have, your inner man is full of fire. It's on fire with the fiery light of God's glory. Uh, well, Dr. Clark, you are, you, you, surely you are exaggerating. No, I'm not exaggerating. The word says I got to quit because I just ran out of time. Well, praise God for another day and another privilege and opportunity to share with you the living word of God. I trust that you have enjoyed uh, this, this portion of the series the power of the kingdom blessing stay tuned and make sure that you uh like and sh share and subscribe where we will continue this week uh on on the blessing the power of the kingdom blessing so we bless you apostolic and prophetic we speak and release the blessing of the lord upon you as we already have uh don't forget to to like and share because this blesses us so we can continue to be a blessing to you uh, we love you to life, and there's nothing you can never, ever, 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 never, ever, ever think of doing about it. See you real soon. Blessings. <laughs>